So what's going on here then? Well, the engine's missing out of Lou because it's over here on the floor. And sat next to it is an engine that I drove four hours two and four hours back from Bangor in North Wales to pick up. It's um, mostly the same. The electrics are a bit different, but uh, I figure worst case scenario, we just um, change the stator uh, and all the gubbins that go in there. How hard can it be? It's only electrics. Um, because frankly, after saying that this thing was for sale, I got um, a whole bunch of messages really. Uh, one was very useful, it was someone putting me onto this engine. So thank you very much for that, you know who you are. Um, and the rest of them were, I'll give you 50 quid for it, which um, the engine only cost me three times that. So I figured rather than get 150 quid for it after doing the maths and realising that I've probably put 1200 quid into this bike, which yes, I know, complete waste of time and money. These things aren't worth 500 quid on a good day. Um, but yeah, I figured um, instead of giving it to someone for 100 quid, I might as well try one last time. I know there's a 99% chance that this engine's probably going to burn oil and run just as badly as the original one, but um, at least this way, if it still doesn't work, I can say I tried. And um, I have a spare engine that I can do something fun with. I don't know, hook up to an alternator and build a generator or put it in a go-kart or something silly where it doesn't matter if it burns oil. So that's what I'm up to now. Um, it's a fairly boring process, but for anyone who's um, interested, there's three bolts at the front, there's two bolts at the back. The things you need to disconnect are the starter cable, the ground cable, this breather, obviously take the carburetor and the coil off as you would when you're doing pretty much anything else with this engine, um, and then just remove the plugs for the regulator rectifier um, and the CDI at the top. Other than that, nothing um, nothing particularly drastic you've got to do. Um, just worth bearing in mind the engine's a stressed member, so um, I've got the bike up on the centre stand, but don't go like sitting on it or, I don't know, bouncing on it or for whatever reason, because um, you'll probably bend the frame. And when you put it back in, there might be a bit of finagling and jiggling. You might need two people to um, manoeuvre everything into place because it might not want to. You might have to sort of bend the frame back in. I'll be back when this engine's in um, and we can figure out the wiring. Uh, so until then, I'll spare you my swearing and um, huffing these engines about. They're surprisingly heavy for little tiny engines. Um, see you in a moment. All right, just an update. Um, I'd heard there were different flavors of this engine and I thought it was all just um, down to this. So if you see an automatic timing chain tensioner, which this one's not, it's the manual, then it's the newer one. And if you see an automatic one, like we saw when we rebuilt the other engine, it's a newer one. And I was warned that the um, flywheel stator and the coils and everything were different. I just assumed that those differences went with the two engines, older and newer. But this one has the older timing chain tensioner um, and it has what I think is the newer um, stator setup. It's entirely possible this engine's been blown up before because um, the cam chains are prone to snapping on these and it's got a head off of an old one on the bottom of a new one. But this is actually the um, rotor that came out of this engine that I've just bought. I've already switched it with the one off the old engine. Um, and so this is the new rotor. This is what the inside of the new rotor looks like. It's got a different charging setup and it only has one CDI pickup, whereas the older one has two. So I'm on a bit of a wing and a prayer here. Um, I've just popped the old rotor onto the new engine. The timing marks all line up, so um, in theory, the signal should be going in the right place. They look the same. They have the same one-way clutch on the back. Um, and I've just popped all of this off of the old engine. Um, and I'm just gonna pop the casing off of the old engine onto the new engine. Fingers crossed, um, that's the extent of the differences and it should all work. I can't see anything in here that shouts, this is gonna blow up. Um, so catch back up with me when I've eaten those words and it's all blown up. Just come across another little difference while putting this back together. The um, inlet points the other way on this engine. I have no idea whether that's um, to do with, you know, maybe the newer ones, the intake box is different. Your guess is as good as mine. Um, although I think uh, we're together enough. I've just committed a cardinal sin and put the oil back in it that it came with. Um, just to see if this will fire off with the um, moved over rotor and stator.
That sounded promising. Well, no horrible, horrible noises anyway. It um, sounds a different again to the original one and the rebuilt one. So who knows, but um, at least it runs. So I'm gonna go away and swap the intakes over, um, check the oil level before I run it anymore. And then we can check and see if the gearbox and clutch work. Because one thing I have noticed, the clutch is incredibly light on this. Um, it wasn't so on this one. So we'll see. Also covered the garage floor in uh, oil, so cat litter. Oh, and, and another thing. <laughs> the um, Evidently some cross between an orangutan and a mechanic has worked on this at some point because the oil drain plug looks like it's been beaten half to death and um, one of these side cover screws has been... I don't know if you'll ever see this. Yeah, <laughs> no idea what happened to that. Um, fortunately, I do actually have, when I was in a far better mood with this bike, uh, a whole bolt kit for it to pretty it up, um, back before things went even wronger than they did. So far, so good. Um, yeah, let's get the last few bits and bobs swapped over, and then we can uh, see if it works. Yeah, so false alarm. Someone's had the intake off and turned it up the wrong way, so I flipped it back again. If you're ever wondering, there's this line that runs across the top um, that defines where the boots line up. They've all got notches in them and stuff, so as long as they're lined up, it's good. But yeah, the intake was on upside down, and because uh, it uses no ring, not a gasket, it wasn't obvious. Who knows where someone had that often was playing with it. No idea the history of this engine. But um, onward and upward. So it was getting late on a Sunday. Um, I got the bike back together again. I idled it for 20 minutes, did the time and chain tension, did the valve clearances, um, gave it a bit of a blip up and down the road just to make sure that it was working. And then I thought I'd take it on just a couple of mile loop just to get everything fully up to temperature. Um, and I was a bit distracted with the clutch because it was slipping and biting too soon at the same time. Um, kind of felt like someone might have put car oil in the bike rather than um, bike oil because the clutch would slip when you got above about 3000 RPM but um, when you were sat still no matter how much you took tension off the clutch it was still grabby and trying to push the bike forward. So while I was busy um, trying to figure out what was going on with the clutch um, <laughs> things got a little more dramatic. So I made it about half a mile and I noticed the engine was starting to um, feel groggy. I pulled in at the side of the road to find that the oil is not in the engine anymore. It's now all over the engine and everything else. So I think what I was feeling is probably it's seizing up because the oil's not in it anymore. <laughs> it's a comedy with this bike, it really is. I have no idea where it's come out of, but it is so hilariously everywhere. <laughs> um, I'm guessing it must be front gasket for it to be this everywhere. It's down my right boot, not my left boot. So it's not the cover that I've had off. I've got a couple of mile walk home now. So, um, I guess that's the end of this video. I don't know what I'm going to do with this bike. I'm past the point of angry, annoyed, or anything else. Um, it's just funny. It is truly just funny. Oh well. Maybe it'll burst into flames on the way home. It's certainly smoking. See you when I see you. So that's where the story ends really. Um, 3.4 miles I pushed the bike up the side of a major road um, in the dark. <laughs> uh, 
Suffice to say, um, I feel like I've done a few rounds with Mike Tyson today because it might only be a 125, but um, the Cotswold Hills are pretty brutal. And so it's currently sat in the garage leaking oil all over the place, um, and, and I have honestly no idea what to do with it next. Um, I'm going to assume from the fact that uh, it got as empty of oil and as hot as it did that probably the lower bearing shells are cooked. I'd be very surprised if they weren't. Um, but it does mean taking the engine apart and honestly I'm just fed up of taking these engines apart and given the offers people have made me and the sheer amount of money and time I've wasted on this bike I'm considering tearing it apart and just selling the bits on eBay um, you know, don't want to look at it anymore <laughs> to be honest with you maybe I'll have one more go I'll um, see if I can make one good engine out of two less than good engines um, but maybe I'll do a teardown video because it'd be interesting to see what on earth went wrong with this engine. Um, it was supposedly taken out of a 16,000 mile bike that was running and and good to go. So um, inevitably looks like I've just been ripped off by a twat on eBay. But um, I don't know. These engines seem to have some kind of problem with keeping their oil inside them in the right place. Something I'm, I'm, I'm going to guess is probably the front head gasket is where the other one would leak. Um, relentlessly when you didn't get the head gasket set right um, sort of down the um, the very front where the piston comes closest to where the exhaust port is we'll find out I'll tear it apart and we'll find out okay well there's your Chardonnay Friday for the week anyway thanks for watching everyone